I'm delighted to be here with you for our thankful Thursday practice. Gratitude makes visible what we value, what we take for granted, we make invisible. And so you showing up here today, you're making visible gratitude in your life. This is also Teacher Appreciation Week. This is particularly special for me because both of my parents are retired educators. So big shout out to mom and dad and all of the teachers out there. One of the key things that is essential for learning is a growth mindset. And so that's what our focus will be on today. A growth mindset is about the quality of your perseverance. It's about your sense of possibility in the face of challenges and difficulties. The opposite of a growth mindset is a fixed mindset. So in the face of challenges or difficulties, do we see limitations? Do we see failure? Do we rather choose to give up rather than to give thanks? And so I invite you to get comfortable. If you wanna take notes, doodle, that's what I did in school, close your eyes or share in the comments. This is your practice. And so I invite you to be comfortable in how you do it today. So let's begin with a few deep breaths. Just get comfortable. I'll guide you through a couple. In, two, three, four. Release, two, three, four. In, two, three, four. Release, two, three, four. And go ahead and let your breath return to its natural rhythm. Notice when you breathe in, where you feel it in your body, in your nostrils, your chest, your belly. You might be wondering why we start a gratitude practice off with a few breaths. The practice of meditation begins with noticing each breath. The practice of mindfulness begins with noticing change. And the practice of gratitude begins with noticing good. We're actually not learning gratitude. We were all actually born with it. What we are practicing is bringing awareness to our noticing. So I invite you to think back over the last 24 hours from yesterday afternoon to when you went to sleep, to when you woke up this morning, to this moment. What was something good that you noticed? Make a mental note, write it down. That moment that you notice something good, that spark of joy, you pierced the veil of familiarity. Part of the challenge is that when things become familiar, we actually lose sight of them. We take them for granted, they become invisible. Now, where were you in that moment where you noticed something good? Were you lying down, sitting? Were you alone or were you with someone else? That spark, I want you to imagine that as a flame that you can grow. Pause to actually feel that emotion rising up inside you. Where in your body do you feel that sensation? Each time we pause to not just notice something good, but actually feel it, we're creating emotional muscle memory. That emotional muscle memory is our awareness growing and actually being able to see 
the change happening around us to see what is good. And what's amazing is that each time we notice it, it actually becomes easier to see the good all around us. And so not only are we noticing good, we are literally shaping the world in which we are living in. Now I know that things aren't always easy, but there are difficulties, there are challenges. We're in a global pandemic with COVID-19, but even before this moment, there might've been and likely was some difficulty, some challenge, like a pebble in your shoe that with each step, that pebble feels like it's growing bigger. I want you to imagine whatever that difficulty is, name it, that's your pebble. Now take that shoe off and take a look at it. There's this great Zen Cohen that to a beginner's mind, anything is possible. And to an expert's mind, few things are. So when we look at that pebble through the lens of a fixed mindset or an expert, all we see is a rock. Maybe we want to classify that rock. But to a beginner's mind, and when we look at something with a sense of possibility, that rock can actually become something else. It can become a touchstone, a reminder that just because we see something in one way does not mean that it has to be that way in terms of how we react. And so turning that rock into a touchstone, a reminder that we can see a sense of possibility is also an important part of the practice of gratitude. So we've noticed something good. We've paused to absorb that feeling, to see a sense of where we are. We also see the challenges and the difficulties. The other key step in the practice of gratitude is the giving thanks. One of the reasons I love gratitude is that it's a social emotion. It's at that intersection of our own self-care and our relationships. So I invite you to think about a teacher in your life. It could have been someone in a classroom, a coach on the field, a mentor at work, a friend, someone who saw something possible in you. And maybe they even saw it before you did. And how did that feel to be seen? A sense of pride, a sense of affirmation, a sense of worthiness. That's what happens every time we give thanks. We are both seeing people, giving them that opportunity to feel a sense of pride, a sense of worthiness. And we are giving that to ourselves as well. It's so easy to see the negative. Our brains are literally wired to react to change from a point of view of a threat. And so each time we pause, we're creating not just that emotional muscle memory, but we're learning to trigger our positive emotions so that we don't become triggered by our negative ones. And then when we give thanks, we are recognizing our own agency to see things in a different way. That is a growth mindset. As we close, I'd like to share a, a personal story. As I mentioned, both my parents are retired educators. And so from a very young age, I knew that I did not want to become a teacher when I grew up. I saw all the sacrifices that they made. My mom, an elementary school teacher, was often out of the house before I woke up. And every night when I went to bed, she was working late grading papers. The word blessed in German is blossom. It means to sacrifice or even sacrifice with blood. 
So when we say that we're blessed or we're counting our blessings, what we really are doing is recognizing the sacrifices of others. And that's what gratitude is. It's a reminder that we are connected to something bigger than just ourselves. Of course, my first job after college was teaching. I was serving in AmeriCorps in East Palo Alto, which is in Northern California. It's literally on the other side of the tracks of Stanford University. When I was there, it had been murder capital of the United States two years before. There were still dirt roads. The street that I worked on and where our community technology center was located was called Whiskey Gulch because there were so many bars and liquor stores on that street. I remember asking my mom for advice as I was about to become a teacher. She said, be fair, be firm, be consistent. She said that you're not just teaching these kids technical skills of how to use a computer. You're teaching them how to become citizens, the value of showing up. To be honest, it was one of the most amazing experiences of my life that 18 months that I was teaching in East Palo Alto at the Community Technology Center. It was my blessing. Those kids showed me so much. They showed me that in the face of all these obstacles and all these challenges, that there was a sense of possibility, that their opportunities were not fixed, they were not limited. They showed me the power of not giving up and of giving thanks. And that's what each of you are doing when you give thanks. You're not letting those limitations, those difficulties, those challenges define the way that you're gonna look and enter and be in the world. When you give thanks, you are noticing and piercing the veil of what is familiar, seeing the gifts that are there in every moment. You're pausing to appreciate and rewire your brain so that it becomes easier to see the good each time. You're acknowledging the challenges and the difficulties and turning those rocks into touchstones. And finally, you're not doing it alone. You are part of something bigger. Giving thanks is not only good for you, it's good for our common good. Thank you so much for joining in this weekly check-in as we practice and explore the practice of gratitude. I love hearing from each of you. So please share in the comments, email me at hello at gthanks.co. I look forward to seeing all your posts in the public journal, which reminds me, I wanted to share a few posts from Monday when the daily prompt was about our giving thanks to teachers. These are three that really, they were all amazing, but this, these three struck me. This one person said, I appreciate that teachers believe in you before you do. And they try to teach whatever you need to learn in a new way that makes sense to you. Another person wrote, teachers plant seeds that grow over a lifetime. Again, each time we give thanks, we're planting a seed. And lastly, the best teachers are pros at mining for the best part of a student and helping the student recognize the worth of the gem they've uncovered together. That's what we're doing when we're practicing gratitude is that we're uncovering gems together, that we're not alone, that we're doing this together. Thank you so much for joining this week. I look forward to next week uh, for another thankful Thursday. Please give thanks. We need more gratitude in the world. Cheers.